Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Tuesday, July 21st. Where does the time go? Today we uh, commemorate the prophet Ezekiel. And then I think tomorrow we commemorate Mary Magdalene. There's a lot of saint days in the next... In the month of July, there's a lot of saint days. And I think Saturday is St. James. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Praise the Lord. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty deeds of the Lord, or declare all his praise? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you save them, that I may look upon the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory in your inheritance. Our Old Testament reading today is a continuation of our reading of first samuel uh, first verse of chapter four and the word of samuel came to all israel now israel went out to battle against the philistines they encamped at ebenezer and the philistines encamped at aphek the philistines drew up in line against israel and when the battle spread israel was defeated by the philistines who killed about four thousand men on the field of battle and when the troops came to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord here from Shiloh, that it may come among us and save us from the power of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh and brought from there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, who was enthroned on the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. As soon as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel gave a mighty shout, so that the earth resounded. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shouting, they said, What does this great shouting in the camp of the Hebrews mean? And when they learned that the Ark of the Lord had come to the camp, the Philistines were afraid, for they said, A God has come into the camp. And they said, Woe to us, for nothing like this has happened before. Woe to us, who can deliver us from the power of these mighty gods? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with every sort of plague in the wilderness. Take courage and be men, O Philistines, lest you become slaves to the Hebrews as they have been to you. Be men and fight. So the Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated, and they fled every man to his home. And there was a very great slaughter, for there fell of Israel thirty thousand foot soldiers. And the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, died. A man of Benjamin ran from the battle line and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes torn and with dirt on his head. When he arrived, Eli was sitting on his seat by the road watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told the news, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the sound of the outcry, he said, What is this uproar? Then the man hurried and came and told Eli. Now Eli was ninety-eight years old, and his eyes were set so that he could not see. And the man said to Eli, I am he who has come from the battle. I fled from the battle today. And he said, How did it go, my son? He who brought the news answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has also been a great defeat among the people. Your two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of God has been captured. As soon as he mentioned the ark of God, Eli fell over backwards from his seat by the side of the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died. For the man was old and heavy. He had judged Israel forty years. 
Now his daughter-in-law, the wife of Phineas, was pregnant, about to give birth. And when she heard the news that the ark of God was captured, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed and gave birth, for her pains come up, came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women attending her said to her, Do not be afraid, for you have borne a son. But she did not answer or pay attention. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory has departed from Israel, because the ark of God has been captured, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory has departed from Israel, for the ark of God has been captured. Our writing this morning is from David Critaeus. Uh, we've heard from him before. David Critaeus was a, a student of Luther and became one of the next generation of uh, Lutheran reformers. And he wrote about the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel, the son of Buzi, from the line of Aaron, was a priest and prophet. In the year of the world, 3350, in the sixth year before the fall of Jerusalem, he was divinely inspired in Babylon to console and strengthen the Jews, who five years previously, at the urging of Jeremiah and of their own free will, had given themselves with King Jehoiakim, or Yaconia, to King Nebuchadnezzar, and had migrated to Babylon. These people, seeing that the destruction of Jerusalem was delayed for five full years, were thinking that the predictions of Jeremiah were in vain, and they were regretting that they had voluntarily left their fatherland. Therefore, Ezekiel predicted that Jerusalem surely would be overturned, even if the punishment were delayed for a while. At the same time, he also promised the liberation and return from Babylon. In the year of the world, 3358, the third year of Jeconiah's migra migration, Ezekiel was called to his ministry by a unique rite and divine testimony. The vision of the four wheels and the living creatures signifies the chariot of Christ, in which, through the ministry of the gospel with the breath of the Holy Spirit and the fiery tongues of the apostles, he is conveyed to all the world. In the year of the world, 3378, the 25th year of Jeconiah's migration, Ezekiel described the building of the spiritual Jerusalem, or of the ministry of the Church of Christ, from the 40th chapter until the end. And a bit more about uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel, the son of Buzi, was a priest called by God to be a prophet to the exiles during the Babylonian captivity. In 597 BC, King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian army brought the king of Judah and thousands of the best citizens of Jerusalem, including Ezekiel, to Babylon. Ezekiel's priestly background profoundly stamped his prophecy, as the holiness of God and the temple figure prominently in his as the holiness of God and the temple figure prominently in his messages. From 593 BC to the destruction of Jerusalem in the temple in 586, Ezekiel prophesied the inevitability of divine judgment on Jerusalem, on the exiles in Babylon, and on seven nations that surrounded Israel. Jerusalem would fall and the exiles would not quickly return as a just consequence of their sin. Once word reached Ezekiel that Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed, his message became one of comfort and hope. Through him, God promised that his people would experience future restoration, renewal, and revival in the coming messianic kingdom. Much of the strange symbolism of Ezekiel's prophecies was later employed in the revelation to St. John. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war, held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath, may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs to be ever watchful of the confession of your Son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace, that we may withstand all trials, and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, through the prophet Ezekiel, you continued the prophetic pattern of teaching your people the true faith and demonstrating through miracles your presence in creation to heal it of its brokenness. Grant that your church may see in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the final end times prophet, whose teachings and miracles continue in your church through the healing medicine of the gospel and the sacraments. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this night, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.